Hello everyone, my name is Fabaria Pendragon, we are the Whispers, and this is how to play Chef in Risk of Rain Returns. This video intends to be a fully comprehensive guide, so we'll be covering everything from unlock to proper usage. To get Chef, you need to collect a set of items, specifically the food items. You need to collect Meat Nugget, Bustling Fungus, Sprouting Egg, Bitter Root, and the Foreign Fruit Equipment item, all in one run. Personally, I used the command artifact just to make sure I get the right items without wasting a bunch of time, and I recommend you do that as well, but it is very possible without command. Chef is a wonderful hybrid and a mix of playstyle flavors that come together to make one of the most unique and fun to play survivors in the roster, so it's no wonder that our little bot here is so well beloved by the community. I personally describe him as a scrapper or skirmisher archetype, not bulky enough necessarily to be a brawler like Handy or Drifter, but also more mobile with some hit and run aspects to the playstyle, moving in quick to do a burst of damage, then getting out of harm's way, but continuing to poke at the hordes from relative safety. His mains and ults, depending on how you mix and match them as well as what abilities you lean on more as a player personally, can definitely push him more to the brawler end of things, or to a more safer hit and run ranged type. So he can be hard to pin down to an exact archetype, but his flexibility and playstyle means just about anyone can cook up a delicious run and have fun doing it. No, I don't plan to stop with the cooking jokes. For abilities, we're going to have to go a bit out of order here and start with Chef's fourth skill, Second Helping. This ability does nothing on its own, but it empowers every other ability, changing the next one you cast into a stronger version of itself. Think of it as a usable Ancient Scepter for the rest of your kit. This is where a ton of Chef's flexibility lies, because you can choose what ability you want to boost and lean on more as an individual player. Also, when you have an Ancient Scepter equipped, this ability becomes Full Course Meal and boosts the next two abilities cast. And as we go through the rest of the guide, I'll let you know the second helping effect for each of them as well. Starting with the primary fire, Chef has Dice, where it throws piercing cleavers a good distance out that boomerang back to you. This means each one hits enemies twice, and with their light stagger and ability to proc on hit items on both the throw or return, this is great for filleting a crowd to ribbons. With second helping, this becomes Mints, where you throw 9 cleavers in a simultaneous ring. This can be used while inside a boss or larger enemy to do a good chunk of damage, hit crowds of flying enemies, or just clear the room a little bit when you're surrounded. Next is Seer. You more or less just become a better Wisp. You shoot a burst of fire that pierces, deals strong knockback, and gets bonus damage when comboed with our next ability. After using Second Helping, this becomes Flambe, which ups the damage, range, and knockback significantly. Third, and technically last since we went a little out of order, is Glaze. You shoot out a wave of oil, getting a minor speed boost in the process. The mobility is really a footnote here, as the main function is to apply oil to enemies. While enemies are coated in oil, searing them does notably more damage and stuns on top of its existing knockback and pierce. When boosted by second helping, you cover extra distance, letting you coat more enemies. Already, without touching a single ult, we have solid options for every situation here. Chef gets around the map pretty well, can very easily handle crowds with cleavers or a combo of glaze and a second helping of flambe, and has options to do very good damage to bosses. Chef can hold its own in any situation and can adapt at a moment's notice as that situation evolves. Really quick before we move on to the alts, I've been working really hard on these and taking a lot of the suggestions that you guys have been giving me into account, and I think these have improved a lot. So if you like it, let me know, tell me something in the comments, press the buttons, y'all know what to do, it's a YouTube video, I'm doing the content creator thing. Something something, people who aren't subscribed, something something like the video, y'all know how this goes. Anyways, back to the video. Chef only becomes more flexible with his alts, of which he has three, for his first, third, and fourth ability respectively. First, dice can be swapped out for slice, turning your ranged boomerang into a stronger, piercing, and deceptively long-reaching melee. When using second helping, this becomes Butcher, a brutal single hit that functions nicely as an execution. Generally, you'll get more damage if you can land all 9 of Mince's cleavers, but that can be tricky to do, so this is less damage, but still a rather heavy hit that's more guaranteed to land, and you don't have to stick around so close waiting for the cleavers to come out and come back to get your second hit. Just get in, hit them hard, and get out. Next, Glaze can be swapped for Oil Jar. Instead of coating enemies directly, this creates a zone of oil that will coat enemies that walk in it as long as it exists, meaning you can sear with the damage boost multiple times with one oil patch. Additionally, the movement on this is much less of a footnote than its main counterpart, allowing you to freely move in the oil while attacking as you slide around. 
Now all the chef mains get to know what it feels like to be Huntress. While using second helping, the area of effect is much larger, which may not seem like a lot on its own, but being able to repeatedly sear enemies away, then move freely to poke with either of your primaries with a lot more space to work with can be pretty huge. Lastly, second helping can be swapped to... <coughs> Alright, I gotta do this right, one sec. For his last ult, it's finally time. I said, let him cook! Okay, that's enough of that. It may seem tough to let go of second helping, but again, hear me out, let me cook. You repeatedly strike enemies, and any enemies killed by the ability get cooked alive right there, being turned into unique temporary food items. It's just Drifter but better, because every meal is helpful. With Drifter, you might roll an item that you don't want, but all five of Chef's unique food items are good and useful to it. There are three important notes though. First, the attack can't crit, but it can proc all other on-hit items, which is still nuts given how many times it hits so fast. Second, the item you get is random. It isn't actually determined by the enemy you kill with the ability, despite what the name might make you think. Third, these temporary items don't decay like ordinary ones where you lose one per stack. No, if the timer runs out, the entire stack vanishes, so you need to keep up the cooking to refresh the stack and keep up your buffs. Now, let's quickly go over the meals. I'll have the wiki chart up for you on screen while we do. Bison Steak improves health regen and speed. Lizard Loaf boosts damage. Golem Essence gives you a temporary barrier and increases armor. A few stacks of this can make you very tanky. Jelly Brain Salad reduces all your cooldowns by one second. Yes, it stacks. Yes, you can have no cooldowns on your ability. Yes, it's nuts. And lastly, Fried Eyeball slows enemies near you. And because I almost forgot again, Ancient Scepter turns Cook into Buffet, which doubles the number of times you hit enemies, doubling your effective damage and your chance to proc on hit. Each of these ults on their own is great. I love Melee Chef, though I'm also biased because I love Melee Survivors. Nerf Overloading Elites, please! Oil Jar is a great side grade, and in some ways a straight upgrade. And Cook can be fantastic, but Second Helping still stands on its own as well. There's real reason to pick either ability. For most survivors, while I present the abilities with their strengths while trying not to seem too biased to help you guys make a decision on what you'll enjoy, I typically consider one or the other just to be outright better. I usually don't jump around a whole lot. But like with Minor, I'm constantly swapping abilities because they're all good and they're all fun. There really is a dish for everyone with this character. Once I got them all, I ran full alt set for a while, but then I started to miss mints and flambe, and now I generally run oil jar as my only alt, then occasionally switch between cook and second helping depending on how I'm feeling. But experiment around, you're gonna find something you like, I promise. Now that we have our tools, what are some of the best ingredients for Chef? In the white rarity, I am always ecstatic to see backup mag. Especially while running Oil Jar, having spammable Seer is great. Even without the Alt 3, the extra crowd control and safety from just having a second charge is wonderful. Rusty Knife and any form of damage over time is generally great, especially if you lean heavy on your thrown cleavers, though it can make killing enemies with Cook specifically tricky if you're running that. But Soldier Syringe and other attack speed boosts like Mocha are always welcome, regardless of the loadout. In green, pretty much any on-hit item is going to be great here. Ukulele pairs beautifully with Dice's already good crowd control. ATG Missile is going to get a lot of mileage as well. Boxing Glove, Shackle, or Concussion Grenade will all pretty much lock down the entire crowd. And if you're using Alt-1 instead, things like Charge Field Generator and Frost Relic will be very good friends of yours. Predatory Instincts is also just great in general because again, attack speed great on Chef. In red, I gotta give it to the missiles hands down if you're running cleavers. For Alt-1, Hyper Threader is actually super fun and really good. And regardless of what you use, Hardlight Afterburner is a gift from Providence himself on Chef. Praise be, god damn. For equipment, I love Unstable Watch because with the big ass knives, I am literally pulling a Dio at this point, and yes, I'm making the same stupid joke twice in a row, what are you gonna do about it? But in all seriousness, the attack speed from prescriptions is really good, Shattered Mirror is gonna make everything that's great about your main primary even better, and Supermassive Leech can do tons if you want to push more in that brawler direction while using Cook and Alt-1. For boss items, Legendary Spark or Ifrit's Horn. 
Chef just does so well with on-hit items that these run away with it by a landslide. Though, as I've said before, it's hard to go wrong with any red or gold item. And that's about it. Obviously, you can see I did a lot of things very differently in this video for those of you who have been here since the pilot video. Um, let me know what you think. I am just trying some things. A few things were obviously a bit more shit posty, which is more like my more relaxed, casual content. A lot of things I tried to instead of focusing on what I thought wasn't really as helpful, like the title cards in the top left, I tried to focus more on like the items showing up on screen and other things like that, making those better in ways, you know, even earlier in the video that would help people understand what I was talking about. I'm trying to focus my time on this video to see if one, I can make things a little bit faster, two, I can keep things a little bit more engaging and improve retention, and three, just make things overall more helpful instead of wasting time on like unnecessary transitions, focus on like getting better demo clips, for example, uh, and improving the scripting and doing other things that are going to make the actual like educational material in the guide more effective for you guys. So let me know what you think. Be honest. Tell me below. Also, if you want to see a guide made for your character, Remember, subscribe, check the poll. If you're watching this, it is already up. Also, if you are watching this on the day it released, uh, I am probably streaming right now, or at least I will be in like an hour or so. 7 p.m. EST thereabouts is where we typically start. Gonna be playing some Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades, uh, H3 VR. It is a fantastic game, and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So come hang out with us. Uh, that's about it, though. Also, take it easy. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Bye-bye.